So hi, welcome to the <clears throat> real time and scheduling microconference. Uh, it's it's two communities, right? Real time and scheduling is two two kind of uh, topics. But at the end of the day, we are mostly the same people doing the same thing, and so it's better to concentrate into a conference with a lot of like hot topics and get people involved. And uh, and it's it's good to see everybody here. It's been there's people that I haven't seen for quite a while. Things are getting back to normal. I think at this time things are, are normal, and uh, it's uh, it's like a for me it's a special moment of the year coming to to the conference because I see many people that I work every day, and I just don't see every day. It's, uh, it, it, it's a, a social moment for us, the, the people that work in the kernel. <clears throat> uh, we would like to to say thanks for the sponsor to make this possible. It's not easy to organize a conference like this, and it's mainly say thanks for the people organizing it. I know that there's a lot of work behind for the people. Thanks to Steve that is always running for these things. It's a uh, it's a very important for us, and uh, also <clears throat> the idea here is to discuss. Right for us to express ourselves in a in a more productive way that we do at a at a mailing list, we we can express ourselves better uh, here in the real life, and uh, and that's the idea. If you have questions, ask. If you want to stop presentation, stop. The ideas of the presentation is that they are very short to introduce the problem, so people have time to discuss, and that's the idea. Uh, and and as Stephen said. Let's, let's keep a, a, a healthy ambient here. Let's discuss, and if we if things start to, to get uh, warm before they get hot, let's breathe and let's be kind to everyone. We need to follow the, the code of conduct, and uh, we need to make like a, a, an environment where people feel at their, uh, at their best to discuss and share these, their ideas, right? At the end, that's that what matters and that's what is best. So, and I am the first presenter. Let me. So, so I, I'm Daniel, I work for Red Hat, and I'm mostly working on scheduling in real time and verification stuff on that realm. And, uh, and I'm here to talk about the patch set that we are discussing. We had a lot of discussions last, last week. And, uh, and it's about the DL server as a mechanism to replace the throttling as a first step, then to make it generic. So <clears throat> what, is, what is the problem, right? On, on the, the regular FIFO scheduler and RR, we don't have a, a bandwidth control, right? So uh, a real-time task in, in the scheduler I, I think it's the people doing the it's not on me, I'm just... <coughs> so yes, as, as they put this letter full screen. So the idea, the, the problem is that <coughs> when you... Yeah. You, you don't need to see myself twice. One is already too much. <laughs> so the main, the main problem there is, or, or the basic problem is that <clears throat> with the honor scheduler hierarchy, the, the real-time scheduler, the, the RT scheduler, is always on top of CFS, or of ske fair scheduler, we should say now. And uh, if one uh, runs a busy loop task, either because they want or, or because there's a bug, it uh, when a real-time task starts running, it will run forever and we, it might cause starvation problems for uh, fair tasks. And uh, if it's a user task, it's okay. It's a, a, a decision for the of the user. But the, the point is that we have a lot of per CPU tasks that are deferred work and they need to be deferred work. They, they need to to run after some time or when there's some spare time because that's the idea of the third work, right? But if they never run, they can cause issues like RCU stalls <clears throat> or hang other tasks on other CPUs. So we need to avoid this kind of, uh, of uh, problems. And uh, the current mechanism that we have in the kernel is that if the, 
the real time uh, scheduler runs for after for a long time for a longer runtime. We have two variables here. If it runs for longer than nine uh, nine hundred and fifty milliseconds, then the entire uh, <clears throat> run queue is throttled to give a chance for the non real time task to run. And it was it was burned more as a, a, a debugging mechanism as a safety guard than 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 like a instead of, uh, of a scheduling guarantee. It's, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's a safety measure. Uh, the, the good thing is, I say, it, it, actually, it works in the sense that if you have like a deadline, deadline not, but if you have real-time RT tasks running for quite a while, the, uh, the, <clears throat> the entire RQ will be throttled. Uh, the point is that one, one of the problems, there are more, but is that if you have like an idle, if you don't have normal tasks, then the CPU goes idle and people throw CPU time away. <clears throat> uh, we tried to fix this in the past. Back in 2017, I sent a patch that just did, okay, if there is no starving task, just continue running RT. Uh, it, it, it worked, but it was a duct tape for sure. We carried it on rail for quite a while. I think that people at Google also use it on Android, I think, for a while, but it was a duct tape. At Red Hat, we had we built a, a user space tool that uh, the the name in Italian first name was Workaround in Italian, and we had to need to change the name to put it in our repo. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, and the and the and this tool it, it worked by it monitored the run queue, and if after like a, an amount of time, like twenty seconds or one second, if there is a a, a fair task that never had a context switch. It was we assumed it was starving, and it was there. The two went there and set the temporary temporarily set the scheduled deadline parameters. So the task was boosted using the the deadline scheduler. Just to refresh people's mind, like in the hierarchy of scheduling, we have the scheduled deadline on top of RT. So if you put a task on the scheduled deadline, it will preempt the RT. So we were just whoop, bumping it. And the, back in the day in 2007, Peter suggested a, a patch set that was, instead of boosting a task, you could boost the entire uh, fair run queue. So if after, so if we have like a fair task, it would run for a certain runtime as the, as the real time task, as a deadline task. Uh, but back in the day, we started discussing it and uh, we noticed some problems, right? <clears throat> What, 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 we, what we wanted, if after some time, the, the normal tasks, the fair tasks didn't have a time to execute, we would like to boost it. Uh, why we would like to wait for some time? Because if we just, when, if we just boosted right up on front the, the non-real-time, the, the fair tasks, if we just boost it to always get on top of the FIFO, uh, the real-time tasks. And we would have an anomaly that would be like this. My system is idle. Then I have a real-time task and a fair task being awakened at the same time. If we boost it, the, the fair task as a, a DL task, the fair task would always run on top of RT. So we would have an inversion on the scheduling priorities. And that, that would break many, many workloads. So uh, that was on our intention and that is what we were having, like the schedule the normal scheduler being scheduled like a deadline task. <clears throat> we were breaking the, the FIFO scheduler. Uh, then on the discussions, we started talking about having a zero laxity scheduler. The, that the intention of the zero laxity scheduler is this, okay, it's schedule when you have no, not much time to the deadline. That, that is the intention. But what, what can actually have is that we, when this time come, the, the normal task would run on top of everyone. And here we would have to enter on the details of this cat deadline. But basically, <clears throat> at this point in time, if, if we boost the time, if we delay postponing the task, but and we run it when it's zero laxity, the, the, the zero laxity is when you are a, a runtime away from your deadline. Let's say you have a one second uh, task, we set it to run at a, at a 50, micro, 50 milliseconds before the deadline, and we run it with the deadline at 50 microseconds. But we would have to enter on some details here, but this would break the scheduled deadline. 
the idea of serialized. And, and I can join, speak more in discussion. So <clears throat> the idea that uh, we are working now is deferring the activation of the DDL server for the fair scheduler for a, a time in the future, T0 lax time. So the idea is that, <clears throat> why do we want to do that, right? Uh, as I said before, the fixed priority scheduler has this good priority. That is, the highest priority task start running and it runs if there is nothing higher, right? And me, many people rely on that. On, on, we don't have that on EDF because the, on the SCAT deadline because the priorities change over the time. Uh, using the DL server what was the best way to get out of this starvation. Right? It boosts the RQ, it fixes other problems. But if we activate it when we don't need we can break the first property. So the idea is that we only need to activate or we need, only need to boost the normal scheduler when it's starving. If we boost it when it's not starving, we might have the situation where you get a real-time task and a fair task and the fair task get on top of the RT. That would, I think this would break many, many, many drivers and many people waiting on IRQs. And the, uh, yeah, and, and we learned with Stout D that work around that uh, waiting for it was a good solution. So the okay, the, the algorithm works like this. Any anytime a fair task is is in is in queued, uh, we we start it as a scheduled deadline task, but we don't in queue it as a deadline task. We throttle it until the zero laxative moment. So we say we say schedule it after a while. And after this, this while passes, like if the task is able to run as a fair uh, without being served as a deadline, like if the system is idle, my fair task is able to consume it the runtime it's, it's reserved for it, uh, we will be always discounting the time. And if it was able to get the runtime inside the period, we don't boost it we reset this mechanism and postpone the period ahead, trying to postpone it the time that we will activate the server. If the task didn't have a, enough runtime until the deadline, we boosted the server. <clears throat> and uh, and yes, the despair server, it's always, uh, it's always enabled when you have a fair task. It's watching the, 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 the run queue. And uh, if the run queue has time to, to consume, it's, it's DL runtime, we restart the period, and or otherwise we just let it boost. On, on, the, sched, on the current implementation, we have um, a runtime and a period for the throttling, and it's global. And in this case here, we are improving it by having a per CPU uh, parameters. And you can say also if you want to defer or not the server. There are cases in which you don't want to defer, and then we can discuss this. <clears throat> and the RT throttling mechanism, it's with this patch set, the RT throttling, it doesn't disappear because the RT group scheduling depends on it. But it's confined RT group scheduling uh, option that is disabled on, on, I think, most of the distributions. And in the future, we have plans to, re to replace this with a SCAD server, but it, it requires some deep research. And it works, the famous test works. Uh, and that's it. Uh, questions, discussions? Yeah, just want to make sure. Um, so what's keeping it from going upstream now, or is it on its way? Is there any issues that's preventing it? I think we need to ask for this guy. Peter? Get Peter on? It seems, it seems I'm hearing him, him, but very low in volume. Is, uh, if a remote speaker comes in, can, is the speakers, should, they be able to, should we be able to hear it? Let me see if he's still on. If you want, I go outside and also oh. test to make sure. This scroll doesn't work fine here. So, I would try to answer. Is there this also a check on the matrix server? I don't know if uh, it is a matrix at all. L -L oh, no, he's not online. So this guy is offline. Uh, no, Peter Peter is remote. So when he speaks, it looks like the sound from the sky. 
Uh, what I, I heard from Peter is that it's uh, queued on his Git branch. Peter's queued dot Git. It seems that it's on the way to be merged, uh, maybe in the next release. But I, I think only Peter can say that. That's my interpretation. Yeah. So actually, this I make this a question more to the audience because uh, people here may not understand the implications of this. So uh, how many people here actually use like a real-time task for their application? Like they actually put something into real-time? A few or whatever? Um, anyone feel like you should? Like there's something that you want run immediately or something and you don't because real-time tasks have sort of a uh, side effect to things. Like one thing is that they go to running forever. We have actually a use case in Chrome OS for this for because we want, you know, Reaction times when you move the mouse, it, you know, you'll see the video uh, change right away. Games and everything else require this. So the idea is to be able to set things that to real time that we normally would not set to real time because we don't trust them. And then have the DL server be there to basically protect the rest of the system. So uh, a malicious task that gets real time can't harm the system because the DL server will kick in and still keep everything moving. Is yeah. So with that aspect of the DL server, there's people more likely to use a real time task for various threads. Yes, no? I guess no one here cares. If anyone is using the real-time, the existing real-time throttling. So the existing real-time throttling, how many users we have because we are essentially changing how it works. Who, who, who relies on, on some properties of the throttling to see if we are not breaking it? <laughs> no, I think I think the problem the problem of this patch set is that I sent it last Saturday, so we could have time to to reach for people to read the patch set again and, and discuss here. Yeah, yeah, but uh, then then we we just make it happen the last week. Uh, yes, uh, so so actually, at least in user space, the Pulse Audio and uh, Firewire guys, they use a daemon in user space to monitor their RT tasks. And if the RT tasks actually exceeded like 200 milliseconds or so, then they kill it and so on. Yeah. So, they, and uh, it is a debug service basically, and they do some ugly hacks to do it, but they have, it is actually in all distributions. Yeah, so so they have their homemade uh, uh, way to avoid the, the the audio threads to starve the system, right? Yes. Yeah, they, that, that that's the same, same thing we do with this Audi. Now they can just set the parameters on the SCAD server per CPU, and they can even pin the they can pin their their tasks into a CPU and change the parameters of the out server only for that. Um, I, I was just going to say, like, there was a question about who's use who uses RT throttling, and I was going to say the obvious thing that everybody, right? Because otherwise the system will hang. So. Yeah, so, but we, we oh really? We, we we have it. We have it at Red Hat. Many customers they they want to run like a CPU full time, and uh, because there is no full isolation, completely full isolation, they don't trust on setting the set tasks as as fair tasks. They boost it to deadline, to boost it to RT, and they all every once in a while hit the starvation. Well, Crystal has a question. Oh wait, yeah. did you want here? Oh. Okay, um, setting a uh, user interface thing to be SCED FIFO and then just relying on this thing to keep it from just running over everything seemed a little backwards. Uh, I seem to recall, you may recall for a couple of days, decades ago, uh, this thing called CPU reservations. Uh, you know, the idea of having some way of saying, you know, okay, this, th this thread does need to have some uh, RT bandwidth, but you know, cut that thing off, not not all RT, you know, a more fine grained thing might be uh, more suitable for that. Like SCAD deadline, absolutely. Well, uh, one thing is I gave a talk at OSPM, the problem is SCAD deadline isn't very hard to use. Um, and another thing is because worst case execution time is something that's basically impossible to calculate. Uh, if you were to calculate it, you're going to get something huge, but because of cache, the range of when things run. I mean, no, but that's that, that's that's a, a pessimist view of that. You don't need to set it as a, as a worst case, 
because the CBS yeah, yes, works but, as but a... Still, the thing is, you don't want it to be throttled unnecessarily. So, the, <clears throat> well, what's it called? There's another thing I was grub. Was that? Grub? Grub. No, grub does help with that. But if something is running, it's not going to run. So maybe you do want to extend it. So you do. No, like, that's one, the thing is, uh, you only want to. I like the fact that we don't want to keep things starving. Now, what would be really nice is if we could have this for RT things, where we can make this individual a little bit more fine-tuned. Once we get DL server in, to say it can only throttle certain. Maybe, maybe you have a way of throttling different things or have different levels, like an RT yeah. server that will allow your RT task to go. I think the the main wish. Let's say, using Peter's words here, the main wish is to get out of the RT as a as the FIFO scheduler, and try I, to I make know, and I try know. to make in, uh, the the SCAD deadline more suitable for for the workload yeah. that we will have. And I disagree with Peter on one thing. I know I wish Peter yeah. could talk, but the one thing I disagree about Peter is saying that there's no use cases. I do believe oh, no, a yeah, reaction use time use case, the latency thing, where you don't care about period runtime CPU users. When this event happens, I want this thing to happen to reply immediately. That is an RT yeah. FIFO situation. That, that, because that's deadline. the property that SCAD deadline doesn't have. You can right. you can arrange things playing with the size of your periods. Yeah. Somehow in the way that the VDF does. Okay, time is gone. Yep, yeah, time's up. Time's oh, up. By anyway, the way, just real quick before we switch off, I want everyone that has a Linux laptop up and running, go do a D message and see if you see RT throttling. I just want to just curious how many people have that happening on their laptop right now. But. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, everyone has that by it's all defaults. Really okay. Thank you, everyone. By the way, now SCAD deadline has one user. <laughs> yeah.